Welcome everyone to our next session. Three years ago, SIPGate showed the DENA community how to leverage Ansible to configure Juniper network devices. This year, Rudolf Bott will provide us with an insight how they improved the initial setup in, this, in his presentation, automating Juniper devices, the later GS. Some words about Rudy. Um, when he's not busy working as a system engineer, uh, keeping ZipGate in AS15594 up and running, he is giving lectures and presentations at conferences and is working for free on open source projects like Ganiti. If you want to know more about this, feel free to contact him directly. Please welcome Rudolf. The stage is yours. Thank you, Stefan, and uh, welcome everyone to this session. Um, let's start. So a few words about uh, Zipgate. Uh, we are a voice over IP provider and we have been doing so since 2006. We also are an MVNO, a mobile virtual network operator since 2012. We operate our own mobile core network. And uh, to, as of today, we are around 220 colleagues. We are, we are located in Düsseldorf, Germany. Albert, since March, we are mostly located in our home office systems. So why are we doing this? Uh, first off, um, some facts. We operate around 830 servers. Um, 300 out of those are actually hardware boxes. Um, we do Debian Linux all the way. Uh, this is our main distribution. Uh, we run multiple sites. And since this is a DNOC session, our AS is 15594. Um, we operate public and private BDP peerings, uh, transit, D6, E6, um, and private voice peerings to other carriers. Uh, and it's Ansible all the things. So we use Ansible for server deployment, service deployments, uh, and of course for the network, or have been doing so for the past years. Um, our network environment is mostly these kind of boxes with the occasional um, legacy device from either Brocade or Procurve, um, but the latter to kindly resist any kind of automation. Um, if you've ever tried to automate a Procurve switch, you actually can, for example, use Ansible to render a template locally. You can upload it to SCP, uh, through SCP through the, through the device, and it will happily apply the config by rebooting. So this is probably nothing you, you want to use in production. But these, device will, these devices will go away in, in, in the near future. Again, back to the uh, why. Uh, since we do voice of IP, um, we, are, uh, we need a, some kind of stable network and a reliable environment. Um, uh, as heard earlier in the, in the, in the firewall talk, um, unfortunately, we cannot tolerate small uh, hiccups or, or uh, changes in the network. Um, some Juniper devices are quite slow. For example, to all the devices are take, take their time to commit a config change. Um, that's something we need to work around. Um, and of course, manual testing is tedious. So testing is something you need in various stages, but if, if you have to do it manually, you will probably skip it or leave out the important parts or forget something. And in the end, automation should, say, among other things, should save time and not just add more time to, uh, uh, the, to your actual task of deploying network devices. So our original setup, which we've um, presented a couple of years ago, uh, allowed us to deploy configuration to Juniper devices quite easily, although sometimes a bit slow. Um, but there was there was room for more, or we had to improve from there. So this is our general toolbox we used. Uh, we use Git repositories, or actually a Git repository as the base for uh, the modules, or actually the, the Ansible roles, the playbooks, and the configuration as well, which is kept in host vars or group vars. Um, we use, of course, Ansible, and the main workhorse is the Junos config module, which does the magic of deploying configuration or 
parts of configurations to the devices. We use AWX or also known as Ansible Tower as, as our central deployment um, solution to not have to use the, the uh, admin's workstation anymore. Um, and uh, we make heavy use of Jinja 2 templates, which is baked into Ansible. And uh, we also use Python Jamali for YAML schema validation and uh, PyTest and Ruby Junosa for template testing. The latter two I will explain throughout this talk because you probably have heard of most of those except the latter two. First off, some, some general assumptions or some general learnings we have applied in the past years. Um, most of these can probably be applied to Ansible in general and not, are not very network specific. Um, first off, you shouldn't just transfer all features that your uh, box has to a Jinja template. Otherwise, in the end, you will just end up with a large, bad to read and bad to maintain a Jinja template. So um, only transfer those parts of your template that you actually need in your uh, daily life or business. Uh, we use smaller roles to split the configuration and we don't have a, a giant role that configures our edge router, for example, but we have, we share code between devices. For example, you can have a role that just um, defines all your base stuff like authentication or um, NTP, DNS, uh, whatever is probably common to most or all of your devices. So you can uh, actually have multiple playbooks used, reuse this, uh, this code or these templates to avoid duplicating everything. Last but not least, we try to build Ansible roads for a device use case, not for a device type. For example, um, you or we have a role for an uh, access switch in a, in a rack, and we also have a role for an out of band management switch. Both are probably the same hardware type, and you could just have one giant template or role, but uh, that would be again hard to maintain and um, while trying to, same, to, to change a simple thing for your out of band management situation, you would probably just uh, cause an error somewhere else in the, uh, which is related to rec access switches, for example. Um, this is an example to, to illustrate um, a rather complex uh, template. So as you can see, the Junos config, which probably some of you have seen before, uh, shares uh, the love for curly braces um, uh, with Jinja templates. So that this, this doesn't mix too well. So if you have to build, for example, a template for an access type device, which has to connect many different other devices, you will probably end up with, with something like this. So you have uh, your YAML representation, which technically has everything that, that, that your template actually, um, or the, the, the actual config in the end needs. So you largely just transferred your Junos config to, to a YAML structure. So there are situations where you need this, but you should really uh, take care of not over, over using this. For example, this looks simpler. And uh, let's say you have an edge router or you have a bunch of edge routers and they, they, they share a, a common um, configuration. And for example, on each edge, edge router, you connect a transit to the interface XE, XE011. In that case, you probably don't need to, to have a fully uh, flexible template, but rather just store what is really, really needed to configure this type of device that's probably the transit name and the transfer networks and maybe some other things in, in reality. But this is just to illustrate um, that you can probably achieve something more readable and easier to maintain with less, uh, with less flexibility. Another um, important step is uh, you need to, to figure out if what you're deploying is actually working um, in different scenarios. Mm. While 
you could say you have monitoring in place. Uh, that's probably not the best way to go about this because uh, if you do a large deployment to your network infrastructure, you're probably not the person who will receive the, the page that something is wrong and it might take a while to actually reach you. So why not try to verify things right after you do that in the, in the same step? So what we use here is um, a feature that actually Juniper devices support command results in um, various formats. If you issue a show OSPF neighbors, you will usually get the plain text result on your SSH console. But you can also just use pipe display and output the same as XML or JSON, which is probably not of much use in the console. But if you combine that with the um, Juno's command module from Ansible, it will automatically convert the uh, JSON return um, uh, values to internal data structures in Python. So you can use that to actually detect whatever you would, for example, uh, uh, ask your router or switch manually in an automated fashion. The, um, the Ansible actually comes with a module which is called assert, which you can use to assert various uh, statements or assumptions about anything. A quick example, the first task just issues a show system alert, uh, so show system alarms, sorry. And the second task just works on the output and um, validates an assumption. For example, that there are no active alarms. And you can actually do anything that is um, specific to your use case uh, and uh, create a sort of, let's say, QA role that you can just add to any of your playbooks and you can use them before a deployment, you can use them after deployment, you can use them in, uh, in a test setup, you can um, uh, gain more confidence in everyday deployments. And um, you can, for example, also validate a network operating system. So you can uh, an update in a lab or in your life environment. Mostly it's, you will probably run the same commands to verify uh, a lab environment than on a live environment. So you can just automate that. And something that we also do, but um, this would just blow up the scope of this session. Uh, we actually have an entire test suite that we can run against lab, which just consists of the same devices as our production infrastructure, but smaller. Um, and we can automatically just apply a, a whole bunch of um, different Ansible inventories or different sets of configurations and um, have our QA roles um, validate its setters afterwards. Earlier I said, sometimes Juniper devices are slow or slow, slow to commit configuration changes. And um, if you, for example, need to, uh, to develop a template or change a template, and maybe it's one of those larger templates which are hard to maintain in the long run, um, this will take a lot of time. So changing something, deploying it, waiting and waiting and waiting, and then noticing there's an error, then go back to deploying, uh, developing, etc. So this is where um, we have adopted something. We have dubbed test-driven template development, which is obviously borrowed from the test-driven uh, software development thing. Just a quick recap what that is. Um, it's a software development principle where you write your unit test first and let it fail because there's no code yet to fulfill what you actually want to have. Then you adapt your software or actually create the code until the test passes. If there's a new requirement, you will update the test first, let it fail, and then adapt your software and then repeat. So that, that's all there is to it actually. So how can we leverage this in networking or in, let's say generally in Jinja templates, for example. So let's go back to our um, uh, example of an uh, annoying large template, which is just assume that, that is 70 lines more of 
mix and match Junos and um, uh, Junos and Jinja syntax. So, how can we approach this in, a, in, a, in an easier or a better way? So, first off, we use a lab device, a, a real device, or a virtual MX or virtual QFX or whatever device to just create the config we actually need. So, th this is the result we expect in the end. For example, just configure two interfaces in a flexible way, a basic uh, layer two trunk interface and the basic layer three interface, that's it. So step two, um, we create a template from there, which has all the flexibility to need to achieve what we do here. And again, just don't make it more flexible than you actually need it to be. Step three, we need to generate some sample data, which we can feed into the template. This is not about the whole device, just for this given template. Well, step four, we need to render the template and compare it to the template we actually generated or the, the outcome we, we defined in step one. And from there, it's rinse and repeat. So for example, add something new to, it, to your desired config, for example, an MTU statement, hence break the test, then go fix the template and possibly the sample data, and you're good to go. This is way faster than actually interacting with a, with a real device over and over again. So to sum up, use the template, apply the data, get the result, compare, that's it. Sounds easy. Let's see if it's actually that easy. Um, first off, how can we glue all of these things together? Uh, in our case, we use PyTest. Um, this is a, uh, let's say, the Python nat native testing framework, which you can use to validate and test pretty much everything around and in Python. It's mostly used, for example, for unit testing a software project, but it, it's not limited to that. And since we're using Ansible, um, which is written in Python, and we're using Jinja templates, which are also available to Python. Um, and uh, we need to read a YAML file with some input data, which is also very easy in uh, Python. Why not just use a uh, Python uh, testing framework? So on top of that, you get an easy way to run your test. You can just issue a PyTest on the console, but if you use something more fancy, like for example, PyCharm or Visual Studio Code, you get an easy integration or visual support where you can just see all the tests it detects and see if they work, start them uh, easily. So this is just here to, to, uh, to maintain the, the ease of use. However, there's one problem. If you've ever dealt with uh, Jinja templates in, in, uh, in uh, real life, um, you will probably see a, a bunch of messed up new lines in white space when you render your template. Um, th th there is a way or there are ways to uh, work around the white space issue in, uh, in Jinja, but th that's just get, that just gets tedious over time. And um, if you want to do a, like a plain string compare, this will almost never work. And you will spend lots of time on, on this issue and not only actually on, on the actual content. However, uh, the Juniper parser is, um, he doesn't care much about new lines and white space. He will happily accept, accept the, the one on the right and the one on the left. So both are fine. They're just not easy to compare. So how can we fix that? Um, this is where uh, uh, another feature of the Junos or Juniper config language comes into play. And it's, um, the set syntax. For those of you not familiar with um, with Juniper devices, they support two types of syntaxes, and um, both are equal. So uh, the set syntax has some advantages in regards to being, for example, grappable, or you can use uh, an easy uh, copy paste thing with it, which you can't with the uh, classic config syntax on the left. Um, however, it's uh, let's say highly redundant and it's not, not easy to template and not easy to use in automation. But 
if we do it, it, it's comparable. So it's like a normalized form of the config syntax. So how can we get there? This is where um, a, a, a Ruby, Ruby library named, I say actually it's a Ruby gem named uh, Genosa comes into play. And um, it, it's, a, it's a small library that actually passes any given Junos configuration. Uh, it offers syntax validation and most important for us here, it translates between the config and the set syntax, actually in both directions if you need it. Um, even better, um, it generates its parser from the official XSD, which is the XML schema definition of uh, a, any given Junos version. So it's not, not uh, stuck to a, to, to a special or a certain Junos version. You can actually just download the definition from your device or use the xml.juniper.net web server, which is usually overloaded and doesn't answer, but you can just ask your, your local device <clears throat> to provide you with the XSD if you're currently running Junos and you will be able to validate and translate uh, templates for your device. That's, that's fairly uh, easy and handy. However, um, <clears throat> I did include the, the, the Docker word in, uh, in the abstract um, quick disclaimer, we are not a Ruby shop. We are not very familiar. We, we use Python, but not Ruby. So um, um, it was a, a bit of a pain to set up uh, the Genosa library on different working environments and different laptops since we this is a, something you use locally for development. So we just opt, uh, decided to just hide away the magic inside a Docker container. But how do you use that from PyTest? Uh, that's actually easy. There's a um, uh, there's a Python Docker library, which isn't a big deal to use. You technically just um, can run a container and uh, get its output, and that's about it. So this is no nothing more complicated than probably calling a Ruby library from Python. So uh, we had to do something about that. So just a quick recap, uh, for each template, you need to store the sample data and the expected result. Then you just read the sample data, render the template, convert to set syntax and compare, and fail or move on to the next template. And that's about it. So spawning the container, of course, takes a bit time, but in any case, you will get a result within a couple of seconds, and it is usually way faster than just starting your deployment over and over again to uh, fix a typo in, in your template or to get a riot or whatever. And the longer your template gets, um, the, the more likely you are to, to implement regressions or break other code paths in your template. So this is fairly handy in uh, trying to avoid any mistake uh, in, in your life environment. Last but not least, um, we started to validate our YAML files, which means the host vars and group vars of Ansible, um, for different reasons. First off, for example, someone introduces a new variable in a template, but forgets to add it to all the relevant host vars. Or someone removes a variable from a template, but doesn't remove it from the host or from all host vars, so other people will be confused by the presence of a certain variable that probably indicates something that, that is not happening. And on top of that, um, sometimes you open a host vars file and um, you think, what the heck are the possible values for this variable? And you need to actually read the template to figure out what happens with this variable. And um, last but not least, Ansible templates choke on missing variables. So unless you are able to use the check mode, uh, in your uh, template, yeah, in, in your playbook, uh, you will only notice a missing variable when Ansible fails to parse or to render a given template, which happens mid playbook. And it's probably not a good thing if you are about to deploy 50 rather slow EX for 300 switches and uh, it, it just fails at switch 40 out of 50 because there, there was one missing variable. So how to do that? Um, there is a there's a there's a Python uh, library named Jamali, which actually actually lets you define 
a schema for YAML file in YAML. Uh, and it has support for basic types like integer, float, string, boolean, null, and lists. Um, it knows about optional and required variables. Uh, it is able to define a set of values, what, what is valid for this variable and what is not valid. Um, you can actually verify content like IPv6 and IPv4 addresses uh, or dates, for example. And you can, uh, you can also um, define custom uh, strings through regexes. There are um, multiple ways to use it. Since we already have PyTest in place for our template testing, we can just include it in our local test suite. Um, but we can also include it in Ansible. Uh, for that, we uh, we have uh, written and uh, open sourced a small um, Ansible module, which you can just uh, use. And this is, of, of course, something that works with uh, Ansible in general. This is not specific to deploying Juniper devices. And you can use that to um, uh, include a task in your, in your playbook, which just validates your host and group vars files right before the actual playbook starts. So it will fail on, for example, on your AWX without causing any harm. This is an example. Um, on the left side, you see uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the YAML definitions, uh, definition we have seen earlier. Uh, and on the right side, you see uh, an example of a Jamali definition of that file. So actually we just say there's an interfaces uh, object with uh, which is a list object or which is a list. And it can be of two types or the list can contain dictionaries of two types which are defined in a second a YAML document within the same file. And that's about it. So this is just here to give you an, an, an idea of how that could work. Quick wrap up. Wrap up. So structure your Ansible playbooks and roles. Um, avoid code duplication with abstract Ansible roles. Avoid complicated templates unless you have to use one. Uh, split out into different Ansible roles before things get messy and complicated and re-evaluate or uh, refactor your code every now and then. You can use Ansible to get instant feedback from your network. So let's just query stuff and uh, evaluate or assert the, the answers. And you can use tests to validate templates before actually deploying them to speed up your development process and to gain more confidence in what you're actually doing there. And use YAML schema validation to avoid extra or missing variables or illegal values. Since this was lots of lots of stuff which you can use in your uh, or may use in your in your environments, um, we have uh, um, written this all up and published it as a as a um, Git repository. You can just uh, go there and uh, have a look. It doesn't contain. Uh, large portions of Juniper config because that's not what it's about. It just contains small examples to illustrate how it works. And it mostly focuses on what we have uh, shown you today. For example, how to use the test-driven approach or how to use the YAML validation, etc. Thanks for listening. I'm done. Yeah, and you have a, <laughs> done it right on time. Thank you very much for this uh, lightning talk, Rudy. Um, maybe only one question. Um, have you evaluated using the Junos NetConf module directly versus templating the config? That is a question from the chat channel. Um, can I repeat that? Sorry. Oh, sure. <laughs> Have you evaluated using the Junos NetConf module directly versus templating the config? Uh, mm, no, we, we started off with the Junos config module three years ago and uh, have been happy ever since. Uh, although it has seen quite a lot of improvements over time when uh, Ansible started to, to um, build the general netconf uh, CLI layer, uh, and, and start, they started to remove the, for example, Juno's easy netconf thing okay. uh, dependency. So the next talk is already waiting and ready. Um, if Please, um, if you have more questions, there will be time in the channels to ask them to Rudy. Um, thank you very much again and uh, see you later. Bye-bye.